Hello and welcome to a Zero How To where today we're going to be looking at customer and supplier reconciliation. So basically those accounts where we can't quite get the balance to match in Zero as what we would expect it to say via an external statement or if we have an external sales system. So I'm just going to share screens with you guys and I have literally just logged into my banking and I have looked at Smart Agency and when I go to find a match and search on Smart I have a little bit of an issue because I've actually paid 4,500, but I actually only have 4,250 pounds worth of invoices outstanding. So a little bit of confusion there. To add to the confusion, my customer, sorry, my supplier has sent me a statement and it shows I have no invoices outstanding whatsoever, which is odd because according to Zero, I am actually owed 250 pounds. So how do we start going about reconciling this? Now, the one thing I will say now at the start is exactly the same principles will apply for customers and suppliers during this process. So I'm gonna show it for suppliers, but the same concept will apply for your customers as well. Now, what I've done is I've gone to contacts, I've gone to all contacts, I've searched for smart and I've opened them up. And this is what I am showing. So I can see I have due invoices of 4,250, bit my bank rec, payment of 4,500. Now, step number one, go to your contacts. And what I'm actually gonna do is go to contacts, go to all contacts, which loads up every single person in the list and search for the supplier or the customer in question. Because first thing that's often causing issues with this is that we may have duplicate contacts, which I most definitely do. So I'm just going to open up my second contact just to show you an example of what this might actually be doing. Um, if I go into these and I select view recent bills report, this will show me a full list of the account history. And I can see I have smart agency with dot after it, but I also have smart agency with no dot after it, two separate contacts, rule number one, merge the two together and we do this by selecting the company we want to get rid of first so i want to get rid of the one with smart agency dot because the correct name is this naming convention up here i go to options i go to merge and then i merge this with smart agency so i select the one i want to merge it into you can merge multiple contacts at once simply tick the ones you want to get rid of merge it into the one you want to keep now i'm going to click into smart agency my newly merged contact and I'm going to go into view recent bills report. This, in my opinion, is the most user-friendly view we can use for reconciling statements. I recommend doing the same for customers as well. What we have here is a full list of the account activity, and we can change the date period, which comes in handy. I'll show you how that comes in handy a little bit later on. But first things first, I need to look at this, and what we often find are common issues are duplicate invoices, missing invoices, missing payments or misallocated payments. So they're usually the guilty parties. So the first thing I would do is go back to my supplier and ask them for an activity statement, not an outstanding statement. This is what an outstanding statement looks like if I've got nothing due. An activity statement is something like this, where I said, please, could you give me a list of the account activity between these two periods? And it should have a list of all the invoices. It should have a list of all the payments. And what we can then do is check against this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, for simplicity reasons, I'm going to change the color of the payment so they stand out a little bit more clearly. So when we're reviewing this, we can see what's going on. And I'm actually just going to move just a little bit over here because for some reason it's popped up in my box and I just realized I'm blocking off the screen. So um, this is what our payment would look like. So we've got a list of our items and we can see that no balance is due. So this is our starting point because this is what we can check. The first thing I would check is I would, up to you how you do this, you could apply a filter and you could filter out anything which says payment, just as a little example, and check the invoices we have in zero versus the invoices we have in here. So I can see that I should have in total six invoices totaling 12,250. Now I actually have six invoices but they total 12,000. So this is a really good sense check against zero because what I can then do is work my way backwards. And if they've given me an activity statement from a given period, say 1st of January to December, I can simply customize this period um, not a particularly good example with this one because I've not got many items, but if I had a really long list of history, I could just filter it down and make it easier to work with. But 
I've reviewed these and what I can actually see is that I've got two invoices in June and I've got no invoice in August. Now, the reason for this may probably be because I've just merged contacts. And what I actually had is a duplicate. So I had two June invoices. I can see them here. Here's one, here's the other. Not much difference, but you may notice they're both marked as paid, different payment dates. If I had an attachment, I'd check the attachment and see that these are indeed duplicates. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually, I'm gonna to have to remove this, but what I would do while I'm in this process is actually I'm gonna remove every single payment in this customer record during the period I'm trying to reconcile against. So if you have a full history of an account and actually it's reconciled up to a certain point, you don't need to remove those payments. I'm just gonna remove the ones from the recent period to give me a bit of a workflow to show you a way to mess, to reconcile a really messy supplier account. So if you've got one where you just think, I don't really know what's going on, remove the payments, reset them to the bank, and we'll work from there. I'll show you how this works as well. So I'm just gonna remove these payments. This take a little bit of time, sorry about this. This is one thing I couldn't have prepared for in my Blue Peter approach, uh, because it's one of those things that I have to do live. So I'm just making sure I've removed all of these payments. I'm just going back into my contact record and refreshing this. So what I should have is a list of fully outstanding invoices. Now, I've mentioned there is a duplicate invoice. And what I'm actually gonna do at this point in time is remove this duplicate invoice. So in, in um, normal fashion, I would just go in, go into the bills, I'd void it. But actually, because I need to change this to the August invoice, which I'm missing, I'm actually gonna edit it. I'm gonna change it to the 4th of August. I'm gonna change my attachment. I'm gonna change the due dates. I'm gonna change my reference and my account codes if I need to. And I am going to reattach the document if I have this available. If I don't, I would request this at this point in time and double check the amount because actually the amount of this invoice is 2,250. So I've just changed that and I'm gonna click update. So normally the way we do that is we'd void the invoice, we'd make a new one with the correct attachment. I've just sort of cut a corner there just to speed up the process. Um, helps also if you change the total because otherwise you get an error message and you don't actually create anything. <laughs> so <laughs> I swear I've done that in a lesson somewhere to say, please check you don't do that. And I've said I do that many times and I am correct in saying that. So I've now updated this and what I can see is my total in zero is now 12,250. My total invoices on my activity statement is 12,250. Perfect. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into the bank reconciliation. And because I mentioned the other culprit is we might have had misallocated payments. This is why I bounced them all back because if you've got a duplicate invoice, you have definitely got a misallocated payment. If you've got a missing invoice, you probably have as well. So it's best to reset it. And from here, I can either do find a match and allocate them to invoices nice and neatly. But what I'm actually gonna show you is when you've got an account, which is a little bit messy, this is your workaround. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to find a match. I'm going to go to new transaction and make a new spend money. And I'm going to change this direct payment to an overpayment. And all I'm going to do is change the reference and the description to payment. And I'm going to change the to or the contact record to smart agency. Please do select them from the drop down list. Otherwise, we make another duplicate contact. Well, we risk making another duplicate contact, which we avoided at the start by merging contacts. That's all we need to change. I'm just gonna save this transaction and what you'll see is a lovely little gold sign here which says OP. This is, means it's an overpayment. This is how we know we've posted it correctly. If we don't have that, it means we've posted it as a direct spend by mistake. We do not want to do that because then it won't be allocated to the customer or supplier record. Now, I'm just gonna repeat this process and what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna repeat this process for any and all payments to this given record. So any payment I see for smart, no matter what the value is, I'm posting the whole lot as an overpayment. I'm not partly allocating it, I'm doing it all as an overpayment because the temptation otherwise is to find a match, allocate it to oldest first or allocate it to one which looks correct, or you end up with transactions where actually you end up ticking some and you end up doing the split functionality which can also be confusing when you're trying to view, review what's going on. And this account isn't a particularly big account, but it might have been a very big account which might have had more differences than simply missing invoices. There might be something going on with payments, and we might have made an underlying overpayment at the end. So it's worth considering posting all of these 
as overpayments. Nice and simple, and I'll show you why. So this is the last one. I'm just going to go back into my contact record. I've gone back into all contacts. Just show you how I got here. Uh, gone to smart, open smart. Rather promising, I can see I owe them zero. And I've gone into view recent bills report. So this is always where I'd revert back to. And now what I have is a full account list history. So I can see all of the invoices. I can see all of the payments. And you may notice that all of the items are showing due items here. And none of them are showing as paid, none of them are showing as credited. So basically I've got a load of unallocated payments. The total due balance is zero. Now the reason I do this is because at this point I would check against the activity statement we've got. I'd remove the filter so I can see everything and I'd check that the total due balance for that period matches. So if this was running from the 1st of January to December I would change my period to the 1st of January helps if I click the button properly, which I didn't do. Run it to the end of December, select update. Also change the as at date to the 31st of December as well. And then what this should be showing is that during this period, I should have the same due balance as my running total. If I don't, then I need to look at what's going on. Maybe I have an opening balance, maybe I have another duplicate, maybe I have too many payments. Um, maybe, the maybe the supplier or customer are missing a payment, so it's things like that. But I can see overall, I've got that all matched to the dot. Now, the one thing I will say at this point in time is if you've had any payments which bounced, so you made a payment, it was returned to your bank, don't post these as an overpayment like I have done here. Simply post them as a direct spend to, say, a bounce checks contra account because it'll be money out, money in. You don't want it showing on the contact record because if you post them both as overpayments, what you end up with is you end up with a just show you i haven't actually got an example loaded up but i'll give you an idea actually i could show you from there basically what you end up with is if you post them both as overpayments is you end up with a you owe them minus one thousand they owe you minus one thousand <laughs> so it ends up a little bit daft because you end up with these two things which don't make sense and then it looks as though they paid you an invoice but they're a supplier so it looks as though they're a customer it's confusing so just don't post a bounce payment as a overpayment. Just a little thing to say on that one. So what we have in here is a full list of our contact record. Now, the one thing I will say at this point in time, whether you're viewing it from age payables or viewing it from here, I just want to show you what each status means. I'm just going to go into age payables. I'm going to select show. This is the old age payable we just viewed, just so you guys know. I'm just going to go into show invoices. And the reason I'm doing this one is because I think it's a little bit easier to follow what's going on. It's a bit of an easier display. And I'm going down to Smart Agency. And anything that's a positive figure is representative of an invoice. Anything that's a negative figure is representative of an overpayment, which we made earlier, or a credit note. So it's important to say those are what those are items mean. So if you're looking at positives, invoices, if you're looking at negatives, payments and credit notes. So just to make sure that you're aware of what's going on with there and there's no confusion on that part. But when I've got my total due balance correct, all I need to do now is allocate the payments, preferably the way that either the customer has or the way that the supplier has. If not, oldest first if we don't have those details to hand because we know the overall due, due balance is going to match. Now, I'm just going to open up all of these payments in a new tab so I can do these fairly promptly without having to keep you guys waiting. So I'm going to allocate it to the orders first. There'll be a couple of these to go in. So to allocate an overpayment, we go into overpayment options. We go into allocate credits and it will give you a list of the invoices it wants you to allocate to. And most importantly, it will show you the remaining credit there. So it's exactly the same as you would allocate a credit note. Um, so please do check whether it needs to allocate across more invoices. Now, oddly, I've got a payment in July, I believe. Yeah, payment of July, £2,000, when actually the invoice in July was seventeen was seventeen fifty. So actually what I have is when I allocated to this invoice first, I actually had overpaid at this point in time. But my supplier in question has carried this over to the next invoice. So I'm going to do the same. So what I have is a partially paid invoice. So at the moment, that invoice is credited £250 from the previous month's overpayment. 
and I've got a total due balance of 2000. So lovely. That's how that works. And that would have probably been one of the items causing a little bit of confusion within our account, because what we would have actually had is a genuine overpayment at this point in time. Now I'm just going to allocate the remaining payments. And as we can see, what I have is a lovely reconciled supplier record. Now, what I will say with this is when you have a customer who has a similar issue where they're querying perhaps a payment or why an invoice is outstanding, I would recommend taking their payments back, posting them as overpayments, because they will show in this way, which means when you go to send a statement to a customer, um, just going to have to visualize this with me. I'll show you how it looks. But say I've got a customer, I go to send them a statement and I go to print a statement. You'll have two statement types. You'll have an outstanding, which will simply show them. Let's update this. Let's print this. Outstanding will simply show them which items are uncleared within zero. So what they'll get is they'll get a little statement which says these items are outstanding. But if you change this to activity, this is how you can do what our suppliers have done for us before, where we said, please, could you send us an activity statement covering this period? And I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to use someone further down who actually has an outstanding balance of zero to show you the difference. Because what I can do is I can print the statement, I can email it. But I'm just going to print it so I can see it on screen. This will show them what their opening balance was, which invoices were raised, and how many payments they've made, and the values of that, and the running total. So this is essentially what we've received from our supplier. So if we ever need to reconcile a customer account, if you post the payments like this, and they're unallocated, it's really handy, because what they'll see is actually, say this company's paid us an extra 2,000 pounds on top of this, for no reason, we don't know why, their balance due is minus 2,000, what they'll have in their record is payment, on X date for two thousand pounds, balance due zero. Uh, balance due to minus two thousand. So they'll see it as an outstanding item on their record, and they'll understand why it's the case. So the biggest confusion with customer statements is when you issue them out. If you've misallocated a payment, that is one of the most confusing things for a customer because they won't understand why one invoice is outstanding, why another one isn't. So if you post them as payments like this as an overpayment and you leave them open, they'll have the correct over, overall due balance, and then you can allocate them as you receive the customer remittances. So that means you're allocating exactly the same, you avoid the confusion. It's a really handy little tip. So we've covered quite a lot today, um, but one thing I will say is just remember, suppliers, customers, follow the same process. So change the period, post payments, payments on account, merge contacts, check for duplicates, check for missing items, and check the physical values of the documents. Because you might have the correct invoice reference, but you might not have the correct value on the actual invoice in question. That's a really subtle one, and it's quite easy to miss. Because actually, SM0145 might have been marked as tax inclusive when I set up the invoice, but the reality of the situation, it should have been marked as tax exclusive. So that's a really naughty little one which causes problems. So please do check. Duplicates, missing, values. I hope you guys found this useful. Um, if you did, please do let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear it. And likewise, if you have any queries, also, please do let us know. Thank you very much, guys. Take care. Bye.